in supporting children's developmental, um, emotional and developmental and learning, um, first we want to define what emotions are. Emotions are actually a chemical function that happens in the body and that it, any human being experiences somewhere in their body. Um, emotions are the, uh, the first uh, reaction that happens when we are uh, faced with any type of uh, stimulus from outside. And we could get this from, let's say, definitely our five senses, and sometimes the sixth sense, which is uh, all of the sensors in our gut that picks up what is the data. And usually we look at it and categorize it in safe and pleasurable, or dangerous and uh, uncomfortable. Um, so our senses bring up whatever is going out. Our internal says, okay, it's okay, go forward or not. And then those are primary emotions. Side by side, we have visualization of a thought process that shows up and we can categorize whatever shows up for us into a different types of categories, useful categories, pleasant categories, unpleasant categories. And depending on how we associate these experiences, then we might have secondary feelings. Um, we might get sad, we might feel shame, we might feel guilt, and all of those are experienced in the body. Children obviously are as infancy, they are uh, an emotional being. So yes. first they get the, whatever data is coming from outside, and they test it with their body and their body tells them that, oh, I can open myself to that or I won't. And when they won't, you'll hear it, the crying of an infant, the yelling and the screaming of an infant that at that moment needs to be safe again and comforted and reminded to the, to the infant that everything is okay. And when they are joyous about it and they want to continue to experience something we would like to mirror to them uh, the joy that they're experiencing and all of that. Now, as a teacher, what we could do is as a parent and a teacher, we can name what's happening. So the wording starts to come to them, which they associate the words, the concepts and the emotions are together. And then we can add something about how to handle it. Even if we're working with an infant, can you share a bit about that? Sure. So when children are very young, they are infants or they are under two years old, the first thing they need to do is to understand the difference between the emotions they are feeling. And as adults, it's our responsibility to teach them. Um, so what, for example, if a child is crying, the way that we talk to them is, oh, I see you're crying. Uh, are you sad? Are you upset? So naming a couple of emotions that the appropriate reaction to that emotion is crying, helps them understand that I am either sad or I am upset or I don't like something, that's when I cry. Or uh, the same thing with happiness. If you're laughing, I see you're laughing. I feel like you're joyous. This is causing happiness for you. That is um, associating happiness with laughter. So we are helping them understand this is the emotion I'm feeling and this is the reaction I have to my emotion when they are very young, when they get a little older, now you go ahead and... To add to what you were saying, I also think that when we say to them, this is, oh, it must be because you want to be hugged, then you're also putting the words of intentionality in the thought process so that you they are associating now the thought to the emotion, to the behavior and how to handle it. For example, if a child is um, uncomfortable, uh, in the same moment as you're naming the emotion and you're saying maybe it's because of such and such, and as the children are growing up, they will let you know also. They will uh, you know, toss their head and say yes or no, or they will kind of observe you and take in whatever you're saying. At the same moment, you can show them how to calm themselves down. So most of the time with fear, you want to hold and caress. Fear is a concept that we want safety. So when a child is anxious or fearful and anxiety is a part of the fear, but not necessarily known for whatever reason that you are afraid of, it doesn't have a target. It's just 
a kind of an unknown fear, which is anxiety, uh, is something going to happen and I'm going to be harmed, is this unknown way of being harmed. And fear is fear of actually something that is there that they're afraid of. They look at something and they think it's dangerous for them. So for a fear or for anxiety, remember, they need to feel safe. They want to know that the world is safe and you're not in danger. So what do you do? You caress them. You hold their hand. You hold the child. Even if you're a teacher and you're in the um, in the environment of a school, you sit down at exactly at their level. At their level, you hold your hand and say, "Can I hold your hand? Would you like a hug? Would you like to calm down?" And then you would start, you know, having them like caressing their hand and using the words, "It's okay. See, everything is safe. See, everything is going to be okay." And then you teach them how to take deep breaths mm -hmm. and take in a breath and then exhale. So this way they associate a releasing mechanism to their fear. Mm -hmm. When they're angry, the same way, you let them know, oh, you're angry. Anger is one of those emotions that needs to be released immediately. So you let them know. If you see that it's in their legs, you tell them to stop. Let's run together. Let's jump up and down and let it go. Let it go. Yes, you're angry. Let it go. Let it go. If it's in their hands, you show them like a little pillow and go like, you know, go ahead and punch or take a ball and start, drop, you know, throwing the ball or get a newspaper or some paper and start shredding. And if it's coming here, they're screaming. It's like, it's okay. Put a uh, pillow around your face and just go ahead and scream. And then turn the scream into a song. And then let's sing together and let it out. So you're showing how to take um, what an emotion is, which is uncomfortable and how to release it. And for sadness is usually the hug. You hug them or you let them know it's the caressing that causes completely another level of chemical for the body, for the child to learn. This is the emotion. This is why it's happening. I first need to release it. And then as they release it, then we ask, what is it that you want? And then see if we could give them or teach them how to get that. Mm -hmm. When they are a little bit older, <clears throat> excuse me, if they are school age children or preschool age children, they already are verbal, so they can actually tell you what they want. And they are a little bit more uh, capable of telling you what will help them release the emotion. There are children who take deep breaths and it helps them. There are children who take deep breaths and start screaming after that. So if you, uh, as teachers, ask them, what would help you release the emotion? Where is it in your body? Do you feel it in your hands? Do you feel it in your jaw? Or do you feel it in your feet? And what do you want to do? If In the beginning, if they don't know how to choose, you can give them options. Would you like to go outside and run? Would you like to jump up and down? Would you like to sit down and I'll put a mellow music for you and you can release it by meditating, taking deep breaths, what will help you release the emotion from the part of the body that you're feeling it in? But um, when they are younger, it's mostly our job to tell them how to release it. It also is very important to ask them, what did you think when this emotion came into your body? Did you think of, I want this toy? And that was your thought process. But when you thought it, when then you were thinking, I want this um, toy, how did you react to it? And then we go from there to the next levels. We will have more videos around how to also look at the different ways that we project to the world. And then we have some reactions and all children will always project the same as every human being will do. So, okay, hold on.